Pray phone day. Previously on Gus the Struggle Boys. Today we're gonna to be doing spray foam. Let me rephrase. So today we're gonna to have. Get excited! Better! Come on! Okay, it's still too early. Come on! Good morning, maniacs. In today's video we're gonna be doing spray foam. Uh, foam! Good morning, maniacs. In today's video we're gonna be doing spray foam. Not us, but we're gonna have spray foam done. Else we're gonna go. We're gonna go through the specifics on why we chose to have somebody else do it instead of us doing it um but it's just a really exciting day so welcome to the so video welcome to today's video they're gonna get to it hold up all right so they're here we're doing the installation it's exciting we are show you the before and we're going to be recording them a little bit throughout so we'll just look So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about why we chose to go with professionals rather than do it ourselves. Cost was a big part for us and trying to find affordable but efficient. We spend most of our time trying to find the best of both worlds. We try to find the most efficient way to do things but also fits into our budget and if we can't then that's when we, you know, come up with our own way or try to make something ourselves. We can't really make something ourselves here. So we wanted something that would act as a moisture barrier, a vapor barrier, and then do the job of, you know, an actual insulation with a good amount of our value as well. With foam board, you're only getting so much per inch, and with spray foam, you get way more per inch of the R value than you do with rock wool or sheep's wool or just the rollout kind that originally came with the bus, just replacing it again. We don't want to have 
gutted this whole bus and done all this stuff to go right back to where it was. We wanted it to be better, but also affordable. So after looking into all these numbers, here was our numbers for rock wool and a couple different other types of wools. A bing, a bing, a bing. We ended up at spray foam. And then we started looking into the kits that people get that you do it yourself. We calculated how many kits we would need, which would be at least two kits to do at least half an inch to an inch on the entire bus that we want to do. Then we called around a bunch of spray foam companies in the area and most of them didn't even answer back. They, you know, if they did, they probably would have just laughed at me when I said, hey, can you come spray foam my school bus? <laughs> but one company that's actually pretty well rated in Houston, um, they called me back and they said that we've actually done school buses before and we would love to help you out. We offer free estimates so we can come out, we can look at the job, tell you, you know, what it would, uh, what it would call for, what we can do in each spot and then you tell us how many inches you want in each area and then we will give you an estimate of what that might end up being. Again, two kits off of Amazon for a 40 foot bus to have at least an inch everywhere is here. And the estimate that he gave us was here. So what's included in that cost is set up, uh, everything that's included in the actual spray foam, and then the cleanup which is also awesome. They take all the tarps up, they clean it all off. When the guy came out and, sh and did our estimate, he told us that this was a little bit of a tricky job, so we might need to be prepared for a little bit of scraping. That was the best choice for us, for what we're getting for our money and what, what the price ended up costing. So I really hope that that helps you guys narrow down your decisions. We can put a couple links below to a couple different products so you can look into what works best for you. And again, that is for our 40 foot school bus. Baby, are you not invited to the phone party? Are you not invited to the phone party? I'm so sorry, I know, I know it. Love him so when he flips that dough, he's Pizza Boy USA.
we are very happy with insulation and the fact that we have it. So. All right, so for the next part of this video, we're gonna be pretty much scraping off any insulation that went past the furring strips or anything that we don't want in the ceiling because it's such a small space that would be, it'd be really hard to go ahead and keep it in that area and still get as much as we wanted out of that. So we told them they would be okay with doing any scraping that we needed. Didn't think it would be this much scraping. So that's what we're doing right now. In order to do our scraping, we're using this, sorry, this one by two to basically hold against the boards and make sure that it's flat. Once we scrape off anything that we need to, of course, without nicking any wires, I'll go ahead and put some general tape on the actual piece. Um, we put some general tape on the actual uh, square that we have finished. The hard part is going to be the ceiling because there's a lot of wires in the ceiling and a there's a lot of scraping and a lot of over your head kind of stuff. For the actual cutting, we're using an for, array of tools. <laughs> for the actual scraping, we're using an array of tools ranging from this, which doesn't work very well, it just helps me kind of hit it off. Uh, this, which is, I'm pretty sure, a drywall knife, uh, which helps me kind of nick it a little bit so I can use this to go ahead and hit it off. Uh, a small, I don't know what you would call that. Saw. Saw, yeah, small saw. And anything else we're using? Just grit and anger and punching. Uh, yeah. Anyways, and this, this piece right here to make sure that everything is flat. The best way to do it is to saw directly towards your face. Don't do that. And you really have, I mean, there's wires everywhere in these walls. You should be very careful. I'm trying my best. Careful is not. Trying my best. <laughs> you mean my best. My best. My best is better than your best. My best is better than your best. False. I ride my bike, I roll the skate, don't drive no car. So this is what it looks like with the insulation and it's scraped. Uh, we love it. It looks case. amazing. We are so excited about how it turned out and how much we got. And uh, like you saw, it did take some scraping, but you know, it didn't take too long once we had the right tool. So now we are super excited and we can move on to the next step. It's really exciting because of what it means, which basically means that we can actually start finishing the bus and start putting up walls and ceilings and more walls and couches and kitchens and refrigerators, beds. All the things. Yeah. But not that we are pros by any mean, but pro tip, if you do end up scraping any kind of insulation or this, the spray foam insulation, get something called a curry comb. Mm -hmm. This is the kind that's made for a dog, like in a pet store. If you get the kind of curry comb that are made for horses, it has a bunch of layers, like it tapers down, and that one should scrape way better than this, but this cut down our yeah, time. It worked amazingly. So much. So we hope all the information and the numbers and the pictures and all that kind of stuff helped you figure out which insulation might be best for you. If you have any questions, we will do our best to answer it with the information that we have or you know a little knowledge that we do know a little experience that yeah. we do have but for now we are super excited yeah so comment down below what you liked or what you didn't like give it a big thumbs up just to give some support because that's how we know that you're there and supporting us if you feel that uh, this video might be informational or helpful to somebody else um, let them know about it share it to them i know this is a community and we we absolutely love it when you tell us that your or our videos helped us out, helped you out somehow. And as always, don't forget to 
Enjoy life. Stay positive. And keep going places. Suckers! Suckers!